шановні колеги. Dear colleagues, good morning and welcome to Ukrainian Crisis Media Center and the Ukrainian Media Center of Reforms, one of the projects run by this center and to explain the logic of reforms and that take place in Ukraine. And because recently we have quite oftenly the issue of management of state uh, debt, uh, that's the issue of cooperation with international monetary fund and structure with ne negotiations with the uh, creditors on restructuring, uh, restructuring of uh, debts, and uh, it, despite the fact that it looks like uh, everyday operational activity of the government, in fact, it's one of uh, the basic elements of the structural changes in uh, uh, Ukraine and uh, making healthy state finances. That's why we decided uh, to try to explain the logic of uh, activities, how it is happening, what is, what uh, they can influence on, uh, I mean, negotiations, uh, decisions on uh, negotiations and with owners of the debt, and what's uh, the situation, and especially we have quite de big uh, developments uh, in EU with Greece, and uh, they draw analogies, and uh, we try with experts uh, to share opinions or vision on how all this uh, development uh, influences on Ukraine, what can happen, whether what can be compared, what cannot be compared. And I'm happy that uh, we have here Igor Borakovsky, Director of Ukrainian Institute of Economic Research and, st and Political uh, Consultations, Alexander Valchishin, and uh, expert uh, uh, of ICU Financial Group and Paul Kuchta, expert of the Remainship Package of Reforms. Uh, these people are among those who uh, who know this uh, topic. My task will be to moderate and uh, to put some emphasis. If you have any question, please ask. That is absolutely we have quite an open uh, platform and discussion. So the first uh, question, it's clear, basic uh, question that Ukraine made a decision uh, about moratorium, possible moratorium uh, to serve a part of uh, that, and that was uh, compared quickly with those decisions uh, in Greece. And uh, that's why the question to uh, both, all of you, how good these parallels um, or not good, what should we pay attention to? Mr. Yuri, we'll start with you. Thank you for invitation. In general, the only parallel which I can bring on the table is that both countries, Ukraine and Greece, has problems with servicing their debts. All the rest is different. Greece is part of the Eurozone. It is subject to the decisions of the European Central Bank with all the um, things which it entails and uh, in Eurozone there is a stable currency and uh, um, loans in uh, Euros in uh, and securities in Euros were very attractive but there is another problem uh, despite quite uh, uh, centralized uh, currency system. They have decentralized fiscal policy and each country had uh, uh, its own policy in terms of borrowings uh, uh, mm, and uh, sec uh, securities and loans. When it comes to Ukraine, uh, when we speak about partial default and uh, we speak about uh, something like 17 billion dollars. Mm, we should state that as of today, we have uh, uh, uncomparable um, level of debts. Uh, uh, speaking about uh, Greece, uh, they have uh, uh, 38 plus something. Uh, uh, billion euros why Ukraine has uh, 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 rejected to serve its 17 billion debt. But what is uh, uh, in common? Uh, the uh, uh, thing in common is that the borrowings should be kept under control and they should be managed and uh, it is not easy to resolve the 
um, issues on uh, on the account of uh, borrowed money because in this case you have to make tough decisions in the inside the country um, and uh, comparing ukraine and greece we should state that in both countries the mm, mm, borrowing policy was uh, not sustainable and uh, there were some abuses inside this system uh, several years ago the europe European Union decided to recalculate GDP of Greece, observing the situation in the country. We also have to keep this in mind as to our GDP. And uh, another thing, that any uh, lending problems, uh, sooner or later, uh, they um, uh, arise uh, in the um, form of uh, problems because the risks accumulate and tend uh, to turn into problem issues. Pablo, will be will you please add something um, about current situation? Mr. Burakovsky described it in very good way in general i would uh, speak about the uh, specificities uh, we are not uh, uh, very much dependent on the uh, creditors uh, uh, on uh, uh, servicing debts uh, uh, of which we decided to impose moratorium but greece is very much dependent on the creditors whom they stopped to pay their debts uh, the situation with greece is uh, uh, more complicated because they are very much interrelated with european banks um, we are not uh, interrelated with the, um, uh, that private creditors uh, from whom we made that uh, borrowings. Uh, um, we are not uh, taking other lendings from them when uh, uh, people start scaring us with the default and uh, 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 remind us about the uh, default of 1998 in Russia, uh, the situation which was harmful also for Ukraine. Uh, and uh, we um, survived uh, real trauma at that time. But in 1998, the entire financial system of the country was uh, uh, ruined and uh, uh, while in Ukraine, we do not expect that it, uh, the financial system will be ruined. Uh, while I in Ukraine, we speak about some group of private creditors and situation does not affect uh, the fiscal system as a whole. I believe that the Greek situation is uh, much more complicated and much more um, crucial uh, uh, from the prospective point of view, um, any ideas that it is possible that default may happen in Ukraine? Uh, we observe a uh, rather hot disputes between Ukraine and private creditors um, on the matter how the um, uh, the Ukrainian debt should be restructured. Of course, this uh, uh, disputes might be um, uh, tough, but looking at our macroeconomic predictions, uh, uh, macroeconomic forecasts, which we produce uh, in in perspective for the perspective set by um, IMF, we come to conclusion that uh, Ukrainian economy and Ukrainian government face the problem of uh, um, uh, credit capacity 
liquidity, it's not the problem of liquidity. Private creditors with whom we negotiate in their open letters, which they published in media, they argument, uh, their arguments were as follows. We do not wish to agree with the restructuring. We would like to uh, make reprofiling, that is uh, to uh, delay with the service payments uh, for the future. And uh, their position would uh, um, comply with the three major aspects set by IMF for, for Ukraine for reviving its uh, uh, credit capacity. Our the position of the private creditors is uh, very optimistic as to Ukrainian economy and. Uh, and my personal vision is that they either uh, have started very uh, complicated game or have extremely optimistic views about the uh, revival of Ukrainian economy. Private creditors say that they cannot agree with the suggestions of Ukrainian government uh, and uh, they believe that the Ukrainian economy will be able to grow more than 5% in real terms annually or even more 6 8% uh, um, uh, in real terms annually uh, our predictions are much different uh, um, and less optimistic. The position of the creditors could be ruined with the arguments about uh, uh, Bakker economic uh, for costs and predictions. Position of the Ukrainian government uh, is uh, backed with logic. Uh, Ukrainian government is overloaded with debts. The debt is not stable, and in this situation, Ukraine cannot borrow additionally. That's why negotiations with the creditors um, inevitably have to come, say, some trade off. Uh, decreasing nomination of debt. Uh, should be up to 25 percent of uh, um, the nominal amount. The, this was an advice uh, for those uh, negotiations um, with the creditors. This is the stage for um, uh, this uh, this stage of active negotiations, and no one of the parties cannot comment on these negotiations, and we will see the results at the very end. There is uh, one more aspect uh, mentioned this week. Those who observed uh, the statement of Give a start in uh, a Euro Parliament uh, and yesterday in Frankfurt uh, Allgemeine Zeitung there was pro-Ukrainian commentary uh, saying that uh, unlike Greece Ukraine, Ukraine tries to carry out reforms uh, despite the um, disputable assessments of the effectiveness of these reforms, but uh, mm, nevertheless, uh, the world can see that Ukraine tries to reform itself while Greece uh, rejects to carry out deep reforms. How do you think, in the context of reforming efforts of Ukrainian government, whether the reforming activities comply with the mm, uh, uh, attempts to um, renegotiate this debt? Sure. Uh 
I would like to add something. I agree with my colleagues that uh, we have different, uh, different situation. We have, there's a big difference between Ukraine and Greece, and uh, our debt, external debt, is uh, 43.5 uh, billion dollars, and uh, and and the uh, information of uh, Minister of Finances. And I, I told about a uh, Greek, but uh, that just. 317 billion euro and 78 percent of the debt is the debt for international IMF for European Central Bank and for on European Union. So that's quite quite a difficult situation. They negotiate with those who gave them a big big money, and every money that was a package of some conditions. And in Greece, there was five or six packages. They they approved and the most known. And what was that? Something was done, so something was not done. But uh, in Greece and Ukraine, we started uh, on different levels. For example, pension reform. It doesn't matter how we criticize it about uh, the decision approved under uh, the previous government and about um, raising uh, raising the uh, pension pay age. There's a correct decision in Greece. Uh, I, I got information that efficient. Uh, age to go to pension is uh, 57 years old and there is no economy that can allow afford that even how the socialist economies like sweden etc the uh, during crisis in uh, 2008 and 9 and further they were raising uh, taxes and also they were raising uh, the the pension age the retirement age. So there are some problems and which are uh, of global nature and we cannot um, uh, get closed uh, from them. If to speak about our situation, yes, the government is uh, trying to restructure uh, expenditures. So that's very difficult to do because uh, there is no unique formula. You can uh, you can take from all a little bit and everything will be fine. You have to take some unpopular steps. It's clear that there, is, there are problems related to the use of budget uh, and we understand that a budget especially uh, it's it's little it requires a tough control than uh, uh, compared to the periods where we have a big budget and also there are issues uh, related to a realization of concrete reforms if to look in general at um, the picture of reform so we have um, 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 a problem with political plan is a past decision, and this, um, they decided on a corruption fight, on the digitalization, and uh, concept and approaches, and uh, like uh, contradictory. But, uh, anyways, we have it. We can uh, speak about efforts uh, to change uh, our law enforcement bodies and uh, start with the police and uh, issues related with uh, judges. But we have to understand that uh, these uh, problems, we start uh, solving them uh, from uh, scratch. and. Uh, the more we learn this situation, economic and political in Ukraine, the more problems we find uh, that were not uh, clear two, three, five years ago. We felt uh, that we have those problems, but uh, every next page, every next uh, door in the corridors of the government, and uh, they show how bad that and complicated that is. One more point that creates objective uh, problems for us uh, related to, to uh, the war. I will take a risk to say that um, I doubt uh, that we'll wait, uh, will, the war will be over in the near future, that conflict uh, in different fronts will continue at least uh, three, five years. And uh, I'm uh, with some pessimistic estimations, but even if that conflict will be over tomorrow, like imagine no Russian troops, uh, the border is closed, and uh, not only once can the Donetsk is up to Chernigiv. And further, anyways, we'll have um, at least uh, seven or ten years. Uh, we will will take uh, to rebuild what was destroyed, uh, and we have to uh, recultivate uh, the economy of Donbas. And there is a big problem because, as far as I understand, uh, the behavior of our counter agents and uh, who are going to get their money. The logic is very simple: we want uh, to to get money, return debts. Nobody will give you allow you to become a, ban a bankrupt because you have uh, get assistance from IMF, from international community. You have to pay money back. And those are the things that are decisive uh, in their position. Uh, there is one more interesting or speculatory moment and a part of debt. The debt uh, committee uh, and the committee of credit states, that we received uh, from uh, the, the market. 
and we can uh, make a small um, arithmetic exercise uh, like a share, appraisal of the state of Ukraine, or euro bond. Let it cost 100 euro. I buy that um, a share, but then I don't believe believe it, and I sell it on the secondary market with this discount for 50 euro. New owner gets uh, spending 5 euros and uh, promise to pay 100 euro uh, from the side of the by the state uh, for that uh, share, and 10% uh, um, as interest rate uh, for that uh, debt. So investing 50, I can get 60 euro, and we understand uh, quite well how these numbers are. It's a temptation who is uh, in speculation. It's quite a logic behavior. We have it. And the last point, we have to understand that the reforms we have today and the reforms we'll make tomorrow, well, that's an, a non-stop process. That's why it's very important today not to only speak to say that we have changed something, we reduced something. It's important that we start some reforms as a process. And it can be implementation of agreements or our obligations to EU as a part of an association agreement. If we speak about the assessment of uh, by creditors, it's very important for them not to not only concrete steps. You go left, you go right. We can touch it, but also whether new mechanism of control uh, in banks are uh, introduced, uh, whether uh, we purify a banking system and clean it. Are there other activities uh, which are long term and which are a part of like politics? Is that the transparency of the banking system when? Uh, they give information about uh, ultimate beneficiary holders, so those last, last, last uh, to whom financial and uh, managerial uh, flows come, etc., etc. In this sense, uh, we are on the correct road, but it's clear that we would like these things uh, to be uh, quicker, and uh, but that's a, uh, um, a separate issue. Reanimation package of reform, Pavlo Kuchta. To what extent Ukrainian reformism uh, deserves uh, to to be carried out, and how they influence on management uh, uh, of external borrowings? Uh, I believe that uh, the main linkage is uh, uh, adverse. This is restructuring. Um, of uh, uh, external debt distracts the efforts of the Ministry of Finance, for example, from uh, reforming process. They uh, have huge responsibility and have to deal with the restructuring of the ministry, have to um, carry out uh, reform of budgetary process, etc. And instead of to be involved uh, in those issues, they have to um, participate in negotiations. And uh, nevertheless, I agree with uh, Mr. Valchishin that uh, Ukrainian situation with debts is not as grave as the Greek one. And uh, upon negotiations in half a year, we will forget about it and reforms will continue. The Greek society did not want uh, to to carry out reforms, uh, uh, they keep saying that they wanted to preserve the former way of life, and uh, they do not wish to change their way of life and want to uh, exist in their former conditions. While in Ukraine, the situation is radically different. In Ukraine, we have started revolution of dignity because we wanted to live new life and to change the situation. And historically, for Ukraine, there is absolutely different um, social demand for reforms. I agree with you that the social demand for reforms and hurrying, out, hurrying up uh, the uh, state in implementation of reforms differs as radically from Greece. Mm. And uh, this uh, 
uh, should be kept in mind when we try to compare Ukraine and Greece. Alexander, you mentioned that your um, forecast of economic growth is more pessimistic than the creditors have, and nevertheless, it is concentrated on reform efforts. The logic of reforms is uh, 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 perceived uh, positively, but uh, now my question to you. Uh, uh, whether the linkage uh, between the uh, state debt the, and uh, the um, reforms, uh, uh, whether, whether it exists and uh, does uh, the government act uh, adequately in uh, this situation? Uh, Speaking today about Greece, I would like to underscore a radical difference of the situation in Ukraine from Greek situation. Situation in Ukraine, it, and it's not just belief, this is a result of my observation and result of my survey. Mm, situation in Ukraine is a bit uh, better than in Greece from the uh, perspective uh, point of view. You, Greece has uh, v uh, democratically voted for the government of uh, leftist forces and uh, uh, they were elected uh, um, based on the not reform positions. Moreover, this uh, 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 gov government in Greece uh, um, consistently acted in the way which had been decreasing cre um, credit capacity of Greece and uh, finally has closed all credit markets for Greece. Another big difference of Greece from Ukraine is that before the current government uh, was elected, the Greek debts were once restructured and uh, they were e included to the balance sheets of major creditors, uh, the IMF, uh, European Bank, etc. But during all the time after that happened, uh, the Greek government uh, uh, negotiated with that main creditors uh, about reforming program and they were unable to come to agreement with the key creditors like IMF and European Central Bank on their uh, uh, reform agenda. In Ukraine, the situation is better in terms of uh, the fact that we have the government which not just uh, speak but also take practical steps in direction of reforms, we observe such a key indicator in the governmental activity as a primary balance of uh, the budget, uh, which clearly uh, indicates how successfully the government manages its uh, finance. This year, this very indicator has been improving persistently, and the latest data from April has uh, shown that this very indicator has improved considerably against, for example, uh, autumn 2007, and Thus, we observe obvious progress, and this progress uh, uh, is uh, uh, reached uh, uh, on the framework of our cooperation with IMF. At that is, we have uh, we are in full agreement with our basic creditors how Ukraine shall move forward and uh, uh, develop its economy. Uh, 
while we have uh, debt negotiations with private creditors. This is the major difference between Ukraine and Greece. That's why we uh, have all the chances uh, to prevent uh, uh, default. Uh, thank you for your comments and uh, thank you for pointing out to the speculations about default. When, sometimes when the public discussion starts, it exaggeratively simplifies the issue. And uh, in this case, some people say that default is good and uh, uh, prevention of default is uh, uh, bad. I should state that it's incorrect formulation of the question, but in Ukrainian economy, default and pre-default situation is always the matter of speculations. Some uh, analysts who criticize the government, they build up their criticism around this issue. Now my question, whether, uh, uh, whether the fact that discussion about debt restructuring, uh, about other re debt responsibilities is uh, good or bad, is for the sake of Ukraine or for the bad? Um, whether moratorium uh, on debt servicing for private creditors is good or bad, and uh, w or whether this is a normal behavior, what do you think? <coughs> right away, I would like to tell you that the issues related to default, restructuring, etc., they're politically sensitive. To stop speculations, is, it's impossible completely. Under any condition, we can always say that uh, the, the glass is half empty or half filled. That's why we'll always face uh, contradictions. On the other hand, in the social discussion, we should understand um, some basic things. The first one, default, under some conditions, can be an instrument of politics. Was it Bank, bankruptcy of enterprise because uh, market economy provides uh, bankruptcy but uh, bankruptcy doesn't mean the death in EU when they speak about a bankruptcy of uh, small and uh, medium uh, enterprises uh, there is a policy of uh, the secondary chance if an enterprise was working a while but uh, because of some objective uh, circumstances wind sun or something the market anything an enterprise became uh, becomes a bankrupt. We start, should start from the very beginning. We should have as others should be capable for them, and um, they will pay more attention to bankrupt uh, bankrupts uh, in banks than uh, to normal enterprises. That's uh, one point. Then the other point is a possible is about a, a possible default, and we should uh, speak uh, say that um, it's a part of our negotiation proposal. We have a certain sum of um, debts. We say that we cannot show that debt and explanation. And we suggest to continue the conversation because the, the issue of restructuring a debt, that's a normal in instrument of bank activity. Many banks not waiting about um, uh, the law on restructuring uh, uh, credit center. They worked with their clients because we understand uh, that uh, the borrower and uh, financial structure independently on whether it's say IMF or private companies etc finally they are in the same boat and uh, nobody from the very uh, uh, very beginning uh, would like uh, to kill the borrower and uh, to to uh, dance the dance of triumph around uh, him uh, nobody does that uh, but we have to understand that any instruments and any uh, steps they are both uh, an act, uh, negative and positive. For example, let's assume we have a default on a country X that announces a default in a short term. We can say that uh, the country will give positive results in the sense uh, that uh, the money it was uh, spent in so debts they stay in the country. We start life uh, from the beginning, and uh, there is, it makes sense. On the other hand, there are negative consequences. 
experience of Argentina and many other con countries uh, prove that after such a, a foolish um, default in in a country for three or four years, it's very difficult to go international markets, uh, borrowing markets. Everybody will be afraid of that and uh, to give to someone uh, to money on the borrowing market is not a problem, but uh, there are a lot of borrowers. And the, the issue is how to uh, find um, a solvent borrower. And um, it's not an issue of, uh, of clients. Um, it's important to find a solvent uh, borrower who can provide a business plan and who can implement it and edit on money because that's the way money banks uh, make using our own money. The other point is uh, to be cynical. We have a very, uh, Ukraine has very low investment rate and, and also even we can, if we, uh, the threat of an arson uh, uh, default, I doubt it will change our investment ratings radically. And then there is a, an issue how to react to that how business will react to it, and uh, I'll uh, take a risk to say that uh, those who feel some threats to the capital, they left the country. They are not here, they stopped their business or they took it away, and there are many other issues around that. In that sense, we should understand clearly that a default, a word of default, that's just a notion. Refusal, a refusal to solve so to some uh, approaches, and uh, there could be full uh, default, like Greece. We don't pay debts and we don't have money. What happens uh, after that? A new round of negotiations begins. So nobody uh, started to bomb Greece. Uh, they just started a new uh, negotiation circle. If we speak about our default, we can say that uh, we can speak about a technical default when we don't comply with some uh, obligations. and. Uh, uh, but sometimes we are in a state of a technical de default when we have to pay for the apartment by the 20th and uh, or certain month, and we pay on the 25th. We paid. We did everything. There is a technical default. We did not comply with un one obligation. Technical default can happen when when we don't provide information. Naknafto gas or Ukraine. Many times it was in a technical default when they didn't publish information, financial reports, annual financial reports. They don't provide full fledged information about uh, gas uh, reserves, not um, as we know, for state guarantees, uh, received big money. Then, um, not very interesting things become, and uh, there is a practice about which we will have to speak, and uh, the last uh, point uh, in a difference uh, to Greece, for example. Well, let's assume, 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 well, that's what I said, uh, the, the country U, Y, um, Y, announces a default. Right away, I want to tell you that I, at present, I see the problem. There will be a problem between the state and uh, some creditors. I don't believe that uh, next day, like in Greece, uh, they will close banks and uh, um, re accredited and there will be a uh, problem. They have some problems. I don't believe that there will be some uh, operations related, and uh, like many people say, then the state will take our de deposits and uh, that will be the end of everything. No, no, no. It's quite a different uh, mechanism, and I don't believe because our state uh, has changed. If we look at uh, Russia, for example, you know, that uh, you know, last uh, two years, the second. Um, Accumulation level of pensions uh, they have in Russia. It was uh, they took it away. They forced it to to cover the deficit uh, of uh, the budget. And uh, such tricks will not work in Ukraine. We are a different country. We have a different moral of behavior and uh, a different level of social control over what can be done and not done by the government. Thank you. Thank you for quite uh, quite a good explanation and comparison as uh, taking into consideration the sensitivity of this uh, issue from the two point of view financial companies and for the financial uh, world uh, restructuring of any data that is uh, a daily part of your work. From that point of view, and from the point of view of financial world, how normal it is to negotiate about restructuring a part of a debt, how to behave, what is a correct and incorrect approach, and what makes sense, and how, from that point of view, 
position of Ukrainian government uh, has uh, rush, is rational. First of all, we should differentiate. We see the difference between uh, negotiations on restructuring done by uh, legal entities like enterprise uh, cooperation, uh, cooperation and uh, negotiations uh, by a country, by the government of a country. These are two comp completely different things because the consequences uh, of uh, not careful steps and uh, actions are quite more serious uh, compared to uh, steps of the government. Uh, so sovereign defaults they are always not pleasant. That has influence on uh, bad influence of the economy, but we should differentiate in the world of such nuances which we have in Ukraine. For ex in my opinion, among all these conversations, we should uh, see the following. Uh, initiative on uh, beginning negotiations with uh, creditors on restructuring is normal and positive. It's a positive initiative because it shows that the government is not hiding from reality. And the reality is that without restructuring this external debt, Ukrainian economy will be so loaded with all the uh, debts that the prospects of uh, economic growth and uh, re renovation of well-being of citizens, common citizens, that's um, that's a big uh, that will be a big problem. So a country, the country can stay for decades in a permanent economic crisis, a debt crisis, and political crisis. When economic crisis uh, they call social crisis, and uh, the background of which uh, other people come to the power, and maybe like in Greece and. Uh, after political crisis, uh, uh, open populists can could come. We have quite a lot of uh, populists in the parliament, and also in the coalition. Oh, outside of the coalition, that's a big risk. That economic crisis, if it's long, it will cause a social crisis, a political crisis, and uh, the background of which uh, uh, open populists will come to power, and uh, that will be just a big loss for all citizens because uh, the power of populists as we see in, in Greece. That means uh, a destroyment of macroeconomic principles uh, of foundation of a country for many, many years ahead. So, so in my opinion, Ukrainian prospects are much better than uh, Greek because we already agreed with official creditors like IMF, European Union, the Japanese government, uh, American government, because so they all work with IMF. IMF told everyone that the Ukrainian government is acting to renovate its uh, solvency. It's the most important because uh, renovation of solvency is uh, renovation of macroeconomic stability and that leads to well-being of all people, not some separate people, all people. So uh, that, that those uh, prospects are better in Ukraine. And as a safeguard is that uh, in the government on key positions we have uh, technocrats and politicians uh, who are not populists and a proof that the government is not acting as a populist because uh, there is we have information about uh, the balance of the budget and it which shows that uh, the government consciously goes uh, to rene uh, renovate its uh, solvency and uh, e e macroeconomic stability. Thank you. Colleagues, we have some time for a uh, conclusion question, uh, quite sensitive, but nevertheless, Pavlo mentioned Russia in 1988 when the situation with securities and on the level of the state uh, that and, um, has not influenced on population brought uh, to the situation to a big uh, crisis in Ukraine? No. 
If we extrapolate or come back uh, that's, uh, to the brain the situation to macro level, and uh, to which extent, from in your opinion, the situation with restru restructuring Ukraine is talking about as a country, how it is related with solvency, economic uh, uh, situation of a concrete uh, Ukrainian. Again, we don't want to understand. We should give a chance uh, to people to assess uh, politicians because uh, there are a lot of uh, manipulations. In your opinion, how these things are connected, in my opinion, uh, they are not connected because we have localized uh, negotiations and restructuring concrete uh, debt. Your opinion for a message also for common, common people who are not owners of, um, of sovereign, uh, sovereign de debt. I'd like to tell them that uh, that is uh, related uh, positively. If we uh, go to default even, we'll just pay less uh, to creditors and uh, that will mean that our country will have more money. It can will, cannot give uh, to us uh, through taxes or spend for something because uh, I will speak about uh, a different side of this uh, default. Just a group of inst institutional uh, uh, private um, creditors, uh, foreign creditors uh, that live ex outside of Ukraine. And for short term, there, there will be a posi positive result uh, for the visitors of Ukraine. We will just have more money, we will stop uh, paying them to those uh, creditors. But uh, long term, if we need uh, private uh, money. But uh, this influence, uh, this default can influence on that. That can bring to negative consequences, but it seems to, to me, I agree that uh, the situation we have in Crimea, I don't think it will have a big influence. If uh, the country is transformed, it will have big, uh, quick growth of this default, if we, even if we have it. I'm not sure we will have it. I doubt it will have uh, such big influence. Sooner it's positive. Also, there are some risks, uh, panic. Uh, uh, we should remember about um, information warfare, like uh, if you go to Novorossiya websites, you will see that they uh, yell about the revenue of 60. So we have an aggressive neighbor who uh, runs the war in that way. And they will try to develop that uh, situation under conditions of uh, free media and free media space. Uh, it will be always for politicians, for not responsible experts. Uh, there is a motivation just uh, to advertise themselves and uh, using some horror stories and uh, to scare people and uh, with sensational things yes, and uh, to improve their rating. And uh, we should take that into consideration and uh, we should not respond to that. But uh, uh, in balance, the balance in negotiations and maybe a default to the profitable for Ukrainian people. Um, my key messages would be as follows. The first, Ukraine cooperates with official creditors and this is a sign of the sanation prospects for the economy and revival of uh, well-being for Ukrainian people, for majority of Ukrainian people. Negative thing for Ukrainians is that they face higher inflation rate. This is negative macroeconomic factor. Mm, but we should understand that the nation of the economy undergoes rather harmful um, uh, steps and tough decisions, for example, as a raise of tariffs. But since uh, in the past, Nafta gas and some other state structures uh, uh, worked uh, um, without any benefit and uh, 
they actually were uh, uh, debtors and uh, put their debts on ordinary people. That's why we cannot e avoid uh, finding solution. I think that uh, the the sanation process. Uh, uh, which was started in respect of Naftagas and other companies, it will result in the nearest future in sanation of public finance and uh, will uh, correct our budget, which suffered uh, a lot in the past. So I will speak very briefly. Why do we need all this? There is a good figure. The last in the last year, 2014, Ukraine has received nine billion dollars of different loans, but 14 billion dollars were paid for debt servicing and. Um, that's why if we manage uh, to resolve this issue, more money we will live in uh, the country and uh, uh, direct uh, to the reforms uh, when we compare the external debt and uh, golden reserves of Ukraine and currency reserves of Ukraine, we immediately see that uh, our external debt is covered uh, with the uh, currency reserves uh, by only 22 percent and uh, here the situation is clear in case of default whether we will be possible to uh, lend any money of course in case of default the uh, credit in trend will be negative, but uh, Ukraine has received uh, guarantees from the United States and some other countries. What does it mean? That when we bring our bonds to the external market, the United States will be our guarantor. And this is important for Ukraine. And the third statement, I agree with my colleagues. There is a real problem today, and this is probably the biggest problem of our today's political and economic life. There is a threat that uh, we will um, blame the war in our inability to carry out reforms, in our ability to cope corruption and in our uh, and our inability to improve the situation for the better uh, if we allow uh, people in power to do this then we'll we will betray those who um, stayed in maidan uh, thank you very much. I believe that those negotiations which are led by the government, they um, are led in constructive manner, in very weighted, um, uh, with very weighted approaches. And uh, um, I believe that the reforms which are the most demanded in the society, they have the biggest impact on uh, social life of Ukraine and uh, I, here I would like to repeat the uh, message by Pablo in uh, this case uh, the aggressive and negative elements try to undermine um, the attitude in society towards reform. Uh, we, um, we should believe not to more sensational um, statements, but to more constructive statements, and we should be very careful with uh, rumors and extreme positions and try to apply common sense. Uh, um, we believe that uh, this uh, 
uh, final message will allow you to stay quiet during weekend when you hear about possible default and my personal advice is uh, to trust government at least in this issue and uh, demand more reforms inside the country. I would like to thank you for your participation and for this discussion. Uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you.